Hey everybody, today I'm going to take a look at issue 3 of Retro Video Game Magazine. This has a date of May, June 2014 with a cover price of $6.99 US, $7.99 Canadian. Retro Video Game Magazine started as a Kickstarter project in October of 2013, where $30 could get you 6 bi-monthly issues. It was headed by Mike Kennedy, who would gain infamy years later after the failed retro VGS slash Coleco Chameleon project that included two faked prototypes. A second year of Retro Video Game Magazine would be kickstarted two years later. Both campaigns are littered with comments of backers who didn't get all of their issues. I decided to go through this issue as it received water damage and was making a mess as the back cover was disintegrating, which I had to cut off. This is labeled the RPG issue and has 64 pages. Inside, we're greeted by ads, including for the Classic Gaming Expo of 2014 and a Rise of the Triad remake that is still available on Steam with mixed reviews. Then we have some blurbs from four members of the team including their favorite RPG memories. Brandon Justice's memory of selling his Master System in all of its games just to buy Fantasy Star 2 for the Sega Genesis gave me mixed feelings. Fantasy Star 2 is great, don't get me wrong, but selling an entire system collection seemed a little bit steep to me, especially if one of those games happened to be the first Fantasy Star. Page 4 features fan letters including a response that correctly predicted that back then would be the perfect time to buy GameCube games before their prices increased. Page 6 covered various news tidbits, including how there was a gauntlet reboot by Arrowhead Studios in the work that I was not aware of. This mature rated addition to the series seems to have been well received. Page 8 covers some recent GameGavel.com sales, GameGavel was an online auction site that focused on gaming that was also headed by Mike Kennedy. Today it's an odd blog site that seems to cover basically casino and PC gaming and has a strange page dedicated on how to properly use its logos. I don't know if this section helped or hurt GameGavel. A Sega rapid fire unit for only five bucks sounds like a steal, but if I'm a seller that wouldn't make me want to list over there nor would a rare Apple II game failing to hit its reserve. Pages 10 and 11 cover various gaming related items, including the arcade drink and game arcade cabinet with a built in keg that sold for $3,500. The two guys behind it appeared on Shark Tank in 2013, but failed to secure a deal with only having 20 sales in two years scaring away the sharks. They would sell the company in May of 2015 for $11,500. Pages 12 and 13 give reasons why retro RPGs are better than real life, including how rumors always turn out to be true. Next, we have an interview with the dev who co-founded Obsidian. Pages 16 and 17 cover two Final Fantasy-related games, Bravely Default and Lightning Returns. The next four pages covers Lord British Richard Garriott, co-founder of Origin, creator of the Ultima series, and the guy who helped introduce gamers to cloth maps. His dad was an astronaut and he himself had been to space. Next, we have two RPG retrospectives covering Chrono Trigger and Panzer Dragoon Saga, which at the time was going for $200 complete, but now it can go for over a thousand bucks. Then we have a section where several staffers share small blurbs about their favorite RPGs, including Secret of Mana, SNES Shadowrun, Brave Fencer Musashi, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Dungeon Master, which I remember playing in my middle school computer lab, Ultima Online, Wizardry for the NES, Etrian Odyssey, The Black Onyx, which I never heard of before, and Final Fantasy II. Then we have the cover story for an upcoming game called Hyper Light Drifter, which didn't seem that interesting to me. The game itself didn't come out to 2016, but it does seem to have positive reviews. Next, we have coverage of more future games, I guess because somehow you can tie them into retro games, including for Wasteland 2, You Are Not the Hero, which apparently was released in an unfinished state, Cosmic Star Heroine, which got released in 2017 to positive reviews, Pure Solar HD, Shadowgate, a 2014 remake I wouldn't mind playing someday, 
and Lisa, which I think was released as Lisa the Painful and received follow-up games to positive reviews. Then we get several RPG reviews of both old and new games, with a rating out of 5 possible hearts. South Park The Stick of Truth got 4 stars, as did Bravely Default. Saturday Morning RPG got 3.5 stars, Lightning Returns got 2, Towerfall Ascension got 4.5 stars, Cthulhu Saves the World got 4, Fantasy Star got a perfect 5 stars, Beyond the Beyond got an imperfect 1.5, and, and Paper Mario and Shining Force both got 4.5 stars. Then we have 4 pages covering someone's pinball machine collection, which in my opinion is better suited for a video rather than dark pictures in a magazine that doesn't do the collection justice. Next, we have two pages covering the higher-priced Sega Genesis games. At the time, Musha Complete was $300, now it's more like $800. Crusader of the Senti was $300, but now it's over $1,000. Madden Championship Edition only increased from a modest $125 to $200 today. Aerobiz Supersonic has doubled from $100 to $200 today. And Punisher has gone from $100 in 2014 to over $300 today. Then we have an article that promotes possibly importing rare games and looking out for fakes. Pages 58 to 59 cover Suikoden 2, which they gave a value of $150 to $300, and today a complete copy can go for about $250. Page 60 is by Pat Contry of the CU Podcast, who talks about the time Nintendo gave away copies of Dragon Warrior for the NES with Nintendo Power subscriptions. Page 61 thinks way too much about treasure chests and RPGs. Pages 62 through 63 are by Sean Baby, who I remember from EGM, whose comedy section covers how long it takes to actually start playing certain Final Fantasy games. And finally, we get a comic called Experience Points, which I failed to find this one funny. So there you go, issue 3 of Retro Video Game Magazine. I'm not sure how many issues of the magazine was actually published. It seems at least 12 were. And I couldn't find anywhere that had the digital issues or back issues for sale. Although you can buy Retro Video Game Magazine Replay Volume 1, on Amazon for under $10, which seems to include highlights from the first 10 issues. Overall, I think it was okay and probably worth $5 an issue if it wasn't for a bunch of delays back when it was kickstarted. And it's a shame that Mike Kennedy's name has dragged down the work of its many contributors. Here it is 10 years later, and it's almost like the magazine never existed. Personally, I was only interested in about half the content and would probably rather read a gaming magazine from the 80s or 90s but Retro Video Game Magazine did have some redeeming qualities. So what do you think? Did you ever get any issues of Retro Video Game Magazine? Did you like them? Do you want some today? Let me know in the comments below. Click like and subscribe and I will see you next time.